Hello, hobby friends. I'm Jason, and this is Level Up Hobbies. Now, today you're joining me on part three of my Painting the Lion series, where I'm painting up Lionel Johnson, just breaking it up into bits uh, a little bit more manageable than a full, uh, extensive, long video. Uh, and I can go into a lot more details in these smaller videos. So here we are. We're painting the green part of his cloak. That includes the the inner cloak that he's wearing and then his outer uh, kind of like weather cloak. Uh, and to begin with, what I did is primed everything in black. And once that's dry, you're going to take and make a 50-50 mix of a black, green, and black. Uh, I used just obviously black green and then coal black from uh, pro acryl um, you can use caliban green if you're using you know gw colors and i'm not sure what the vallejo equivalent is but uh, it's pretty easy to find you find a very dark green now you can make this mixture really customizable for the effect that you're going for I wanted the shadows, the dark parts of my cloak to be pretty much black. Um, so a 50-50 mix of this really works well because the black is a dominant color and it will really drown out that green. But once you thin it out and you make a glaze, uh, as you're painting it over this, you can really see that green really shine through on here. Uh, now, when that dries, it will darken down, and you will barely be able to see that just just the hint of green in there. And as with most colors, actually really all colors, make sure you thin it down. I'm using mine as just like a thin glaze, and I'm really just uh, doing a couple layers over the black on this cloak just to really build up that color that I want. And like I said, if you want to keep it darker, add more black. Uh, if you want it to present more of a green tone, then add more green to that mixture. Now, once you get your desired coverage, uh, we're going to start layering on the initial color. And that is going to be a black green or Caliban green. Uh, what I did here is I take and I thin this down basically almost to a glaze consistency again. And what I want to do is I'm going to stipple on the, the raised areas on the folds and just start building up that color. Now using, I'm using uh, pro acryl, which is all matte, like just flat matte color. And stippling this and building up those layers it really starts to give you like a texture um, that I think is much it's much different than using say like the satin colors of like uh, say like GW um, it's a rougher texture and it doesn't have as smooth uh, layering if you will uh, and I, I think it works perfectly for uh, a cloth like texture. So we'll start stippling this on and you want to go over not all of your surfaces. You want to leave that initial uh, base coat down in the recesses. But you want to start maybe about three quarters halfway up and just start layering that on and leaving a transition between the initial color and then into that Caliban green. And here you can see that black green complete. Uh, you can see the dark transitioning up into that darker green, but there's still a good transition and you can see those highlights there. Or, well, in this case, it's gonna be the midtones. And here I'm starting on the uh, next layer of the highlight. And that is gonna be a roughly 50-50 mix of the Pro Acryl's black green and Pro Acryl green. Uh, now this is more of a grass green color or emerald green. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the GW equivalent would be. Uh, but yeah, it's like a standard green. So you want to mix that up and again I thin this out to not quite a glaze. Uh, because I want it thin enough 
that I can layer it and well I'm stippling it on and as I stipple it those dots will dry and they will just layer over each other creating a a, a texture and I want those to be uh, transparent enough that you're gonna see those colors underneath you know kind of shining through and that will build variation and just subtle changes within the fabric or you know in this case the model and now we move on to the last highlight for me here and that is just straight green uh, you can keep pushing this if you want to. I left it here uh, so it didn't look too over the top in uh, like a bright green. But this, the same thing applies here. I thin it out and I just stipple it uh, farther up on the model. So I only want this green to be pretty much like the main highlight. So it's going to be on the top like, you know, like five, 10% of that, uh, that panel or fold, if you will. And you can see layering this on top of that other green, it's making those highlights a lot more vibrant. Um, if I had tried to take this green and just layer it right over the black, uh, the transitions would have looked horrible. And I don't know, it just, it doesn't have any type of realism to it. Uh, I like the method that I'm using here, the stippling, especially on fabrics, because it really adds tons of texture that I think it adds life to the model, you know, instead of just a flat model with uh, a simple gradient, you know, transition, um, you've got stuff that looks like light bouncing off different fibers and like imperfect, imperfections in the fabric and so on. Uh, so I really like using this for fabrics. Um, but yeah, so just continue building up this green until you're happy with how vibrant it gets because I didn't want it over the top because most of this on the bottom is shadowed anyways. So I didn't want those highlights to be super, super bright. But I think this green uh, came out rather well right here. And here I am after uh, quite a few layers. Um, like I said, just build it up as much as you want here. I think I went over this probably about three, probably about three layers and just built up those highlights. Uh, here I am just testing the outer cloak to see how that's gonna look all together. And next I'm going to uh, Go ahead, and go ahead and glue this outer cloak on since I'm done with this inner uh, lower cloak. And I'm going to start this whole uh, process over again on this outer cloak. And here the cloak is complete. I built up these highlights the exact same way as I did on that lower cloak. Um, I like to think of it more as like kind of a... Uh, like that crushed velvet. Um, it's very, very dark, but then when that light hits those highlights, um, it's extremely bright, but only in those areas. It's like got very fast transition from light to dark. Uh, there's not a lot of mid-tone in there. And I like this, I like how it turned out. Um, I'm definitely gonna enjoy this once it's done and on the tabletop. Uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed what you saw here tonight and can use it for your own, uh, your own models, both, uh, both the lion and really anything else because the colors that I used don't really matter. You can switch this up and use it for any model, uh, any color variation that you're wanting to go for. So yeah, I'm going to call this quits here tonight and, uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. Um, I will see you on my next video. I'm not really exactly sure which one that's going to be yet. But hopefully it will be out very soon. I hate uh, having you guys wait for them. 
but anyways, uh, thanks for joining me here as I painted up uh, Lionel Johnson video three, uh, his green cloaks. So yeah, thanks again. And uh, uh, remember, build, paint, and play tabletop games. Bye, you guys.